Well, it'll be either a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, which, whichever point in time you're at at this moment. So, those people that's been following me will notice that I've got my workbench back here. Yeah, I've, I've had to move my loco off that rotary, that rotary stand I made now. It was getting too heavy and too clumbersome to keep turning round. So, I've moved it over and I've made a a track on my motorcycle workbench and I'll just pan the camera around to show you in a minute but my next, my next parts are going to be the motion plates, the cross heads, the slide bar and the cross head slipper. I've got the bench raised up to its maximum and I've got a couple of milk crates just to raise the track up so I'm working at a comfortable height. This is the first time I've seen my wheels in motion without me having to get hold of them and turn them. Right, so what I've been up to then, besides making that track, I've now got me reach rod made and me reversing lever and I've not shown that because it's just a straightforward piece of 3 8 by 1 8 whatever you want to use mild steel brass aluminium I've actually used aluminium and I've put some bronze bushes in each end for, so they won't wear as as quick and I've got that connected up now <clears throat> And the reason I've connected that up, I wanted to have a practice at setting my valves. Now I'm no expert at this and it's the first time I've ever done it. Apparently the Hackworth valve gear is a bit notorious and temperamental at, at wanting the loco at the correct height. Any variations in height while it's running alters the timing of the valves. So what I've done, you're not supposed to set them up until you've got all your, your weight of your loco at its finished weight apparently. So I've, I've estimated what the weight's going to be. I've loaded, loaded it up with some weights. And then I've set my suspension. And if what I'm going to explain now, if you've not seen my previous videos, you might not know what I'm talking about. But the springs on the top of the axle boxes... Underneath the axle box, a 2BA screw in each axle box to set the height of the loco. And the reason you have to do that apparently is when the, when the connecting rods are at dead centre on the piston, for the piston, so it's either dead centre in the forward position or at dead center in the backward pos position there when it's in that position your little slide in this slide block has got to be in the center of the slide precisely before you can set your timing up and once you've got that set with a weight on <clears throat> You set these screws <coughs> for your suspension and that keeps it in that position more reliably. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect because when it's moving about on track, you know, you, you've, you've still got a bit of suspension so it will slightly vary. Because it's getting quite heavy now, it's, it's heading towards 40 kilogram at that point. Right, so I'll move the camera back around and we'll just take a quick look at these motion plates. Right, here we are then. This is going to be my, my next parts that I'm going to be making. And it's going to be the motion plates, the slide bars, the cross heads, and the cross head slipper over here. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on in, in the next two or three videos. Right, when I first started this project, I, I, I've mentioned many times I was not going to buy any castings. I'm making everything from solid. But just when, I, just when I started to do the build, 
I managed to come across somebody that, that was selling a few castings for this particular loco and in the box was the left hand side motion plate casting made in bronze so I've got the left hand but I've not got the right hand so what I'm going to do so I'm going to fabricate this up to give me them dimensions and then once I've got it fabricated um, I've just got to cut it to that shape and skim this one up so here's one I made earlier I've got the plate cut now and what I've decided to do I've annealed this piece of 1 8 brass plate so I could bend it easily at right angles so that's giving me my shape and then because the bottom leg is a bit thicker than the side I've got another piece of 1 8 cut and I'm going to solder that with some silver solder onto that leg and then I've got a piece of 1 16th brass plate which I'm going to solder onto this side I'm just going to silver solder them together like that then I'll catch up with you once I've done that I've managed to get it soldered up now so I've, I've actually got the right hand motion plate ready for machining the appropriate slots out which I've got to cut the opposite way there so I'm going to go over to the milling machine and uh, just put a little cutter in and just profile that shape out I'm over at milling out, first operation I'm going to do is to square the brackets up before I put this these shapes into them so I've got the first one set up and I'm just going to get the 90 degree angles Right, so I've got all the faces squared up and to, and to length and to width, etc. Everything's been machined now. And I've got to put this first little recess on this side. Ignore that one there, I'm working on this one. And looking at the drawing, it's this little recess there with a sharp corner. So I've got to do it on its end, so my milling cutter will give me that sharp corner and it's 2 and a 16th from this face to the edge so I've touched on, a, on the face, moved over a 2 and 16th and it's a quarter deep from this face and that'll give me that little corner then and then as for the rest of it I've got to then turn the job 90 degrees so me, the radius of my cutter Gives, gives me those radiuses so I'm working on that little bit first Right, I've got to turn it over now, 90 degrees, to cut this slot in here now.
I'm now set up for doing this cut out here. As shown in that blue marker. Now that's only cosmetic, as is this piece only cosmetic. The important piece is from this face up to this shoulder. You've got to make sure that's parallel and to the correct dimension and also from this face to the depth there. That's where the slide bar is going to fit and there's a hole goes above it there. I've put this clamp on just to belt and brace it. So I'll continue and do the other side and then it's just a matter of drilling the holes. OK then I've got all my profile cut out for the shape and everything, to, all to the relevant sizes and I'm just drilling this uh, hole that, where the slide bar fits and that dimension where that hole is is important so that your cylinder piston rod runs parallel to this hole where the slide bar fits. So it's, it's important from this from this face to there or you could go from that face to there. It's either 3 sixteenths that way or inch and 7 eighths that way. And then from this face here it wants to be 7 sixteenths. I'm just going to go over to to the um, frames now to get the position for the fixing holes that's going to fit in here. That's my motion plates uh, finished off now. That's that's the one I did from the casting, and that's the one I fabricated. Uh, one's a right hand, one's a left hand. Like so. So my next my next job then will be the uh, either the slide bar or the cross head. Okay, that's it for now then. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on my next video. Bye for now then.